Hey, guys. I got a little story that, you know, a good friend of mine, Butchie Morrow, we grew up together. He's still, still alive, still in touch with me from time to time. And guys keep asking me stories about him. He goes way back into the Rampers, Doc's Bar. And uh, he's a great guy. Tough as a bastard with his hands. He's a great guy in every way. I got to say this, Butch, if you're listening. He's dumb as wood. I'm going to give you a couple of stories about him. I had an after hour club. I was partners with Billy Stagg. And there was a beef there years ago with Matty Gambino and stuff. It was a great after hour club. People would come from all over. And we had the cops on the payroll. One envelope was the sergeant's club. The sergeants would get an envelope full of money. The, the patrolman, the captain, everybody got money. We made money. It was a commercial area and all these buildings were closed and everything was done at night. There was a few houses here and there. People came from all over to this club. It was gambling in the back and it was really a dynamite club and it lasted all night into the next day sometimes. And uh, we paid the cops off. So one day the cops came in to me and said, Sammy, we got a lot of complaints. Not only on this block, there's only a few houses, but the other blocks, cars are parked all over the place. I said, well, what do you want me to do? Just shut down. We're going to come in at whatever it was, one in the morning, whatever time it was. I don't remember the time, but it was late. Shut the doors. Stay inside. We're going to come in here with a whole bunch of patrol cars. Cops are going to get out. They're going to ticket every single car that's here. Not a big deal. Just stay out of the way so that we could show you know, the people that we came here. It's on record. We have superiors in other places, and we just ticketed the whole place. I said, all right. So I'm standing in the front making people stay inside with a couple of the bouncers and a couple of guys, friends of mine, and whatever. A car pulls up. It's Butchie Morrow. Gets out of the car. Hey, Sammy, how you doing? Good, good. How's it going, Butch? And I tell him, come on in. I tell him, go in the club. Hang out in the club. Oh. I'll be in a little while. Have a drink. I want to get him in. I want to get everybody off the street, in the place, so that when the cops start pulling in, I lock the door, and that's it. Not a big deal. So he's standing, he's standing behind me. The patrol cars start pulling in, one after the other. Cops getting out of cars, another patrol car. The cops are getting out, another patrol car. They're ticketing everything. So Butchie goes to move. I said, well, take it easy, bro. I, but I parked my car. It's a parking ticket, bro. I'll pay the ticket. Don't worry about it. Because he wanted to move his car. I thought. So I hold him back. And I'm standing there. Cop is looking at me. I nod to him. I got this. And uh, Butchie, right past me, almost knocked me over when he ran to his car. Jumps in his car. And one or two cops go right to the car, right away. Right, right away. They want him to stop. He starts the car. The cop reaches in to shut the car, st uh, turn the key off. The next thing I see, the cop's body going into the car. He's got the cop by the arm, and he's dragging him into the car, and he's hitting him uppercuts and hitting him in the face. I said, oh, my God. This is insane. But there was nothing I could do. It happened. More cops came. They pulled him out of the car, and they really, really started going to work on him, punching him, kicking him, hitting him with the batons, the bats. So I run out and I says, hey, bro, whoa, whoa, take it easy. What the fuck? Boom. A cop threw a fucking backhand at me. Knocked me backwards a little bit. All my guys are off the thing. The street is full of people fucking fighting. Guys grabbing the bat. Everybody swinging it out. Butchie Morrow's arrested for sure. And about five or six other guys. I even think one girl 
came out. Her boyfriend was fighting this little, this little skinny bitch, ran out, punches, <laughs> kicking, screaming, <laughs> trying to protect her boyfriend. So I said, this is it. I mean, I don't, from a parking ticket to a massive fucking fight with cops and people. Thank God there was no shooting or nothing like that. I got a visit from the head cops. Sammy, we want to talk to you. Okay, I'm coming in. What? What? The club, the club is closed. We're shutting it down. No more. It's over. It's done. Come on, bro. I shut down for a couple of weeks. It was a fucking fight. Everybody's making money. You guys are making money. Leave it alone. I'll shut down for a couple. No, no, no. This went way above us. It's shut. It's never opening again. The minute you open, you won't even have customers. You'll be arrested. So that was the end of that club. And I don't remember what the charges were with Butchie, assault on an officer, or whatever the fuck it was. So I went back. I said, I want to talk with you. No, we can't open the club. No, I don't want. I don't want to open the club. No, I understand, bro. I I, I get it. The club is closed. But Butchie's being charged with assault on an officer. He assaulted him. You guys assaulted him too. Come on, it was a fucking fight. Long story short, I paid twenty five hundred back then. It was a lot of money. I paid twenty five hundred so that they can reduce the charges against him. He was out. Got some bullshit, small little bail, came out, and he came and wanted to talk to me. I said, no, no, Butch, you can't talk to me, bro. You blew this whole club. There's a lot of guys who were ironing here, me, other people would whip people. I'm making excuses. Uh, I, please, don't even talk to me for a while. He walked away. Before he got to his car, I had to go back and grab him. Come here, you stupid little fuck. And I gave him a kiss, a hug and a kiss. Come by the, uh, by the club tomorrow and, uh, and we'll have a cup of coffee. I'm not mad at you. Shit happens. So he's a great guy. I know him till today. And uh, one year by my house, this is years later, I was made, we were gonna do a 4th of July party. And I was low key, I didn't like publicity. So I said, I don't want to do anything outside. He wanted to do fireworks. And I said, I don't really want to make a big deal out of this. But everybody, including my family, it's the 4th of July, we'll have a barbecue, we'll throw some fireworks, what's the big deal? So I said, all right. And my wife tells me, why don't you get a ride for the kids? Bullshit ride, you know, a little thing there. So I got a ride, this barbecue outside. This thing started to grow and grow and grow. 1,500 people showed up. The whole fucking neighborhood came there. Butchie's there in, in the, where the, the grass and the trees are, and he's shooting off fireworks. You put them in a cannon and it goes up and the whole fucking sky lights up. Highway was right near my house. Cars were pulled off the highway on the side, looking up at the fireworks. I said, I'm done. A little fucking fire broke out. It was fire engines to duck out the trees. News fucking people. Sammy, could we should talk with you? Oh my God. As I'm going by the house, I think my sister-in-law got drunk. She fell in the pool. Sammy, she's drowning. I, then jump in and save her. What do you want me to do? We did that. It was a fucking disgrace. I mean, it wasn't a disgrace. It was a beautiful thing. It was really fun for everybody. Everybody had a good time. But here I am, low key, trying to hide. And I got fucking, it came out in the Staten Island in advance. It was in the newspapers. I said, look at this. But I said, I'll, I'll never have another 4th of July party. No more. This is it. I did this. I listened to all, everybody. I'm not, look, I'm in the newspaper. I'm all over the fucking place. Stop it. We're not going to do it no more. So this is Butch again with his fucking fireworks. 
I don't even know where he got these kind of fireworks. I mean, they put them in like a, a steel canister. The ball was this big. So when you put it in, I mean, this thing went, <laughs> I don't know how many feet it is, a couple of hundred feet up in the air, burst into a big fucking, oh my God. Fireworks. Now I'm thinking fireworks, firecrackers, lady fingers, little flare thing for the kids. That's what I was thinking of. I don't know where he got all this stuff. Must cost the fortune too. So anyway, that's little Butch. I love the guy till today. When I say it was as dumb as wood, I say it out of love and affection. I really like him. And uh, he lives way away from me. That's why I say this, <laughs> because I think he'd come over my house and beat me the fuck up. But uh, he has a bad heart, and he wears this thing. It's actually a fake heart. It's on the outside, and it ticks. You can see them. I mean, I never see anything like that in my life. When I saw him like that, I said, listen, Butch, I've never seen that in my life. But being it's on your body, it fits. It looks beautiful. Wear a jacket over that. And when you go talk to a woman, tell her, I love you, and open up the jacket. She could actually see your heart beating. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> so if you see me, bro, I do love you. And I'm not goofing on you. I'm goofing with you. Because I guess you could t say some stupid stories about me too. All right? So you guys, that's Butch Morrow. You want me to talk about him? That's him. There's many, many more stories. That could be it for three days. But he's a great guy. Um, his wife, uh, Maureen, Moran. I don't know whether I forgot a fucking name for a second, but adios, motherfuckers. <laughs>